Aboard the Mandalorian liner of Duchess Satine cries, an attack on Mandalore's capital city had prompted the Jedi to prepare a defence on the Duchess from the terrorist organisation the Death Watch as well as Count Dooku. The usually unflappable Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi was showing signs of tension as detected by his Padawan Anakin Skywalker and this unease was not helped by the presence of assassin probes and droids roaming on the ship. Upon discovering that these assassins belonged to one of the senators serving as guests, Obi-Wan leapt into action from the dining room and he exposed Senator Tal Merrick of Kalevala. The traitor planted the area with explosives and capturing Satine, it appeared as if they would soon all be dead, so she confessed her love to the Jedi Master and he admitted that he would left the order for her. Despite Anakin killing Tal Merrick and saving them all, it would all be for nothing, where Obi-Wan and Satine were concerned, as she could not hold on to the pacifism on Mandalore, with the Death Watch and the reborn Zabrak Maul ending her reign, then her life. But what if Obi-Wan and Satine were married many years before? How would it change Anakin and those around him? All those questions are about to be answered. In the depths of the Theed Royal Palace, Qui-Gon Jinn and his Padawan Obi-Wan Kenobi are battling the Zabrak Sith Maul when Obi-Wan was separated from his master due to a laser barrier and watched helplessly as Qui-Gon fell at Maul's blade. The young Jedi screamed in anger and began a series of aggressive strikes, then used Maul's overconfidence to his advantage to slice his body into two, promising to fulfil the last request of his master to train the young Anakin Skywalker Obi-Wan reluctantly took part in the celebrations of Naboo and travelled back to Coruscant's Jedi Temple. As Yoda expressed his concerns over Anakin's fears and age, he sent something else from Obi-Wan and the newly anointed Jedi Knight is dispatched to complete the peace talks on Mandalore. It was as if Yoda knew the exact reasoning for Obi-Wan's concerns and he boarded his Jedi Interceptor to Mandalore. The deaths of many new Mandalorians had left Satine even more opposed to violence than she had been before and she had constructed a memorial to those who had died for her cause. The Jedi Knight landed near this memorial and the Duchess had heard about the death of Qui-Gon and bowed sincerely. Obi-Wan did not hesitate in declaring that he was ready to leave the order for Satine but the Duchess made an alternative offer and they secretly married on Mandalore as she did not want the public to think that Mandalore had ties to the Republic. The Jedi Knight struggled to keep his marriage a secret and decided to share it with Anakin after their several years of training together and he revealed he had found himself missing Queen Amidala and together they disobeyed the Council's orders to reign on the planet of Telos to go to Naboo. To their surprise, Duchess Satine was seated beside Queen Amidala at the head of the Royal Palace dining table and they realised they could not avoid the eyes of the council for their entire lives, thus frequently sought the advice of Supreme Chancellor Palpatine. The secret Sith Lord had discovered the unusual activity between Duchess Satine and Jedi Knight Kenobi from his apprentice Dooku and despite his obsession with Anakin, he thought that Obi-Wan would make a suitable alternative and began to organise the Clone War. Dooku agreed but he realised that Anakin and Obi-Wan would be a threat to him and his apprenticeship under Sidious, so decided to try and assassinate both Padme and Satine. The apprentice employed the services of a bounty hunter by the name of Jango Fett and he flew in his ship to intercept the liner on its way to Coruscant, then fired relentlessly. Unfortunately for the bounty hunter, Anakin and Obi-Wan had also been aboard and had sensed the danger in the force, guiding the regal figures into escape pods to the surface of the planet the deaths aboard Satine's ship raised doubts over the abilities of the Jedi to protect the galaxy and this was the point that Palpatine pushed to the Senate to grant him powers to create a Grand Army of the Republic, even if this had not been his original plan. For the Jedi, this had been a devastating turn of events and their only clue as to the identity of the Assassin had been the silhouette of the ship displayed at the time of impact and Obi-Wan travels to the planet of Kuat to discover if they had produced such a craft. The Jedi is diverted to the prison moon of Uvo 4 and finds that a man by the name of Jango Fett had stolen one of their ships and returned to Coruscant. Duchess Satine had heard of Jango Fett as he had participated in the Mandalorian Civil War and his armour of a Mandalorian warrior had previously disturbed Prime Minister Olmec. Padme decides that she should utilise one of her guards to bait Jango Fett and Padme publicly announces that she will be travelling back to Naboo. 
The Jedi fly behind one of Padme's star skiffs, and as they hide behind an asteroid field, they see the Slave One. Zanakin perceives the bounty hunter. The Jedi Knight is joined by his master on the journey to Kamino, and as they approach the largest platform leading to the cloning area, they are greeted by the unfortunate sight of Count Dooku. The Sith Apprentice pretended to be interested in destroying the facility, but he had actually intended to lure the Jedi to their deaths. Igniting his blade, he moved with majestic elegance, but only intent on killing the two Jedi. That is it for part 1 of what if Obi-Wan and Satine were married. If you'd like to see a part 2 soon, please like this video, turn on that notification bell, click that subscribe button on this channel, as well as on my other channel What If Films, and as always, leave a comment on what if you'd all like to see next, and how I can improve my videos. Thank you all very much for watching, and see you next time.